Let's do it. I see your dad there. Hello, everybody. This is Cool Cats Chat. I'm Madwin Amara, also known as Missy. Real name. And this is Endless88. And his name's Brad, as you probably already know by now. <laughs> and tonight we're discussing episode four on Cool Cats Chats. And our question of the night is What does your ideal MMO look like? So. Who wants to start? Do you want to start, Brad, or you want me to start? <laughs> well, I'll let you start. I want to hear. I've been messing with them most for quite some time, so. And I'm kind of a noob, so <laughs> bear with me. Okay, so first things first, what does my ideal MMO look like? Well, and I have to mention this first and foremost, and Brad, don't you roll your eyes at me, but we need to have some decent transmog. <laughs> My ideal MMO has lots of pretty dresses, and by pretty dresses, I mean outfits of all kinds. Um, something that isn't like BFA, <laughs> drab, horrible colors, legion, drab colors, except for my warlock outfit. That one was kind of cool, but um, yeah, ever since... Pandaria, Miss of Pandaria. It, it looks like the transmog designers just went bleh and didn't care anymore about making outfits look unique, different, colorful, anything. It's just like they gave up and don't care. Um, so my my ideal MMO first and foremost would have lots of pretty transmogs <laughs> for girls and boys. Um, with like lots of attention to detail, not costing real money, something you should be able to earn in game or find or farm in dungeons or whatever, but it, it should be there and available. That's one thing for me. Um, do you want to do one to one and then you add something and then we'll come back to me? Or do you want me to keep going? <laughs> uh, I think go, go ahead and do one more. Go and do one more. Okay, one more. Uh, now this is this is kind of hard because everybody knows how much I love to fly, <laughs> but no flying. <laughs> I would like to see no flying at all until maybe later down the road, a few expansions down the road, but you shouldn't be able to get flying until you have done every single bit of content in each expansion and you should only get flying if, if you have to go back to those areas then once you've explored everything on your own then get flying however I'd be fine with no flying whatsoever too <laughs> and that puts everybody on the same equal footing nobody's flying everybody has to explore I mean, these devs take a long, long time with all of these backgrounds, the scenery, and everything else. And flying, you just kind of lose all that. It's pixelated. It doesn't look very good a lot of the times while you're flying through a lot of them. So I think you should just be staying on the ground, in my opinion. And God knows I never thought I would say that because I love to fly. Because <laughs> it's a time saver. Or at least maybe have, you know, a transporter beam. <laughs> like Star Trek. Right. <laughs> well, technically, if you play Star Trek online, you do get that, so. Shh, I haven't played that yet. Yet. It's really old. I played it when it first came out. I bought the collector's edition. <laughs> it was, uh... I need to get I that. even got the little metal, uh... uh what do you call it? Federation symbol. It was pretty cool. The telecom. You could pat your chest. You could talk to others. Well, it was it was more sort of an actual metal. It wasn't actually like a. Oh, not um, a little. Ship I guess symbol. Discovery. I guess Discovery kind of has like just like the regular full metal. Oh. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's two of the things. I do have a couple other things, but those are my okay. those are two basic little things 
that my ideal MMO would look like. So you, you want custom ability and like really cool looking gear and no flying, which means you like having a larger world. Would I would my assumption be or a small to get around world. because a larger world you'd need for flying. You can make it a lot smaller if you're actually Well when you fly the actually well, I mean, I mean, I guess, yeah, you could make a smaller world feel bigger if you're not flying, but yeah. flying definitely makes, like, World of Warcraft seem smaller. But when you're just on the ground looking up at these gigantic trees in L1 Forest, you're like, holy crap, it's going to, you know, was, you know, it looks so it's going to cool. get crazy. But when you're yeah, flying over huge. them, a lot of them are pixelated, they look funny. You know, it loses something when you're flying. It's It makes it faster to get from place to place, but you do kind of lose a bit with that. I think I remember Stan, I gotta, or not Stan, over here, so you guys can see my little skeleton buddy right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shot I took today in in the, in the maw, so Missy it, liked it, so I, was, I guess I'll go and use it. Well, it almost looks 3D to me. It's like the skeletons actually. If, I feel like I could just go up to his face and like poke it. <laughs> well, in game, definitely. Like it, the the graphics are actually really good um, as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, no, it's the the the. Um, I always use the word and then I forget the word. But the aesthetics of the ma and the jailer and all that stuff's pretty cool. But. Um, so as far as me here, so I mean, my f I've always judged games by four things, and my main things are, one, the storyline, the lore, um, the music, and then the gameplay, being that, you know, I could, I could technically play, you know, and even like, you know, well, I guess we'll just go to like Sonic the Hedgehog and Sega Genesis here. So, you know, there was... A very simplistic story. Um, the music, I always like the music in those zones. Very retro. And then the gameplay was really fun. It was really tough. It kicked your butt, made you cry. And when you died so many times, you start all the way over. Um, and I thought the graphics were, weren't that bad either. So, um, you know, but then you go to the games now. Like I said, story, music... If they can have those two, I can work around the gameplay. Even though a lot of MMOs technically have the same uh, feeling of gameplay. Well, you have, well, I guess now MMOs, technically you have traditional old school tab targeting MMO, like uh, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy. Um, but then you have the action one, which is like Black Desert Online, Guild Wars 2. Um, and technically, Ashes of Creation, this is the big one that's everyone's watching, everyone's wanting to, you know, come out. Yeah, right, it needs to hurry up. Um, I keep looking at that $250 package, and I'm like, ugh. But that doesn't get me to be able to play now. No. So I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I, I would pay 250 bucks if I got to play it now, right? <laughs> um. But and they're actually about to come out with a new cosmetic for it. So if you like the fire look, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, they're about to change cool. it to something else. So <laughs> I like the so if fire. you don't, it's, so if you like the fire look, you, you they're probably going to change it tomorrow. Let's just say, let's put it that way. <laughs> so no, um, and it could be <laughs> like I don't know. I thought the orcish like swamp looking one looked dumb. Like I just that didn't. If they come out with like a cool ice looking or arcane looking blue looking set, I'm down to buying right there. <laughs> you're, but... you're sold. Or something <laughs> with like blue lightning. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, so I mean, as far as what I look in games, story, music, gameplay, graphics, in that order practically. Um, you know, because if you have a good story, really cool music, gameplay is good, then graphics don't, you know, Graphics weren't always a thing, right? I mean, from back to Atari, Super Nintendo, it was the gameplay that drove you. And even the music, too, right? I mean, how iconic is Super Mario Brothers music? You know? <laughs> du -du 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 -du. 
du -du 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 -du, you know, like you know like what you that know sound when is. You hear it, like immediately, you're like, okay, that's what that is. Yeah. Um, and then as as far as being you did too, I guess I'll do another one. Was um, what did I put? Uh, I can't even read my own chicken scratch. So I don't even I don't even write anymore with my hands because I just try write I try writing too quickly. So I'm just like I'll type. Well, then typing is too slow. So now I just want voice to text all the time, so I can just talk and someone writes for me. Um, the AI's all scribble for you. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. That's what it is. I'm like, what the hell is that? Uh, so a store selling stuff online is fine, I think, um, but only cosmetic, right? Um, I think BDO definitely plays a very fine line with that, but I definitely do think they do. You know, if something has a benefit, like, you know, you know, if you ever show off, if you ever go play BDO and Missy shows off her, uh, her sorceress, um, you know, she definitely got like some pretty, you know, sexy clothes on there because that's just BDO for you, right? It's literally sexy clothes and big boobs. Um, and uh, there's guys too on there and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, and the cosmetics they definitely they gave you certain stats though, but they weren't like game changing stats, they were you can carry more or something like that stats, but. Technically, that's also game-changing, too. So, I don't know. I think BDO goes good, and then they go bad with their store. But the game itself, I mean, I think you paid, what, $25 for 50 for I When I paid 50 bucks, you paid $25 because it was 50% off. Yeah, that's good because it's a one-shot deal, too. It's not a monthly yep, no sum. no subscription. I actually just updated mine today. I guess they put that new class in there, but... I was like fiddling with it because I'm just like, well, everyone was ready for Shadowlands and now there is no date to look forward to. So until there's a new date, yeah. Boo. And pre patch, <laughs> technically, if I want to play Shadowlands, I, I can log into it. So <laughs> <laughs> as you can see from a picture. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I guess as far as like that, like I said, a store is fine. Like Ashes Creation will have a store as long as it's cosmetic wise. And the thing is, so the kind of little asterisk on that is, so there's no pay to win in Ashes of Creation. Um, and if you buy a cosmetic, let's say you bought a dress in that game that tied to a chess piece, if you didn't have that chess piece, so if you didn't earn that chess piece, you cannot use that cosmetic even though you bought it. So you have to actually earn the chess piece to use the cosmetic for that chess piece. <laughs> well, that negates the purpose of purchasing it. Well, if I have it's to because earn they it want anyway. Then why yeah, would I buy so... it? Well, no, no, no. You don't. You don't earn that cosmetic. You have to earn the base of that that chess piece, and then the cosmetic you buy to change the look of that chess piece. It's like. Um, you can't. You can buy a saddle, but if there's no horse to wear the saddle, you can't use the saddle. Oh, it's okay. that concept. All right. Well, that's fair. So, that's fair. Yeah. So if I get a chess piece and I just kind of like, it's got great stats, but it's gross, then I could purchase with real money something to change it. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Because um, I've heard a lot of people say this too, is... Um, or do you think that some World of Warcraft, um, and even Final Fantasy sometimes, do you think that their gear is way too flashy, abnormal, big? It's just kind of like, I mean, like the shoulders on an orc. I mean, they're like up here and you're like walking around and, you know, like, or would you more, or would you like a more realistic yet still fantasy looking gear? You know, like, do you like the abnormal looking gear? The fat, you know, the flashy things? You know, I, I guess an example would be uh, if he had shoulders in World of Warcraft and then, like, wings came off of them after a while and they flapped around and whatever. Or would you just like a nice... Two of those sets. <laughs> yeah, Where yeah. you jump and the wings come out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a paladin 
was wearing something that had wings constantly, and I want to figure out where the hell Bellar got them. Because <laughs> I want them for my paladin. Well, we need to ask him. <laughs> we definitely need definitely. to ask. Um, yeah, I do like crazy stuff. Um, well, you've seen me. Like, some of it is just very, very yuck. Like, the shoulder pieces, a lot of them are yucky. There are a couple that are pretty, but mostly you'll see Medowin usually doesn't have, like, there's no cape, there's no back piece, and she usually doesn't wear shoulders. Um, yeah, only well, because they're, they're yeah. well, they're overpowering and ugly. Mm -hmm. Unless they're, like, There's a few subtle. that work, but yeah. yeah. But if they're subtle... And they match the outfit, then I'm okay with that. But when they're like big and they're like furry with you know tusks hanging out of them and stuff, it's like that's not cute with my pretty dresses. It just isn't. So no. On the whole, I think you know crazy, crazy can be fun. Like some of them are crazy. Some of them are like shoulders that are green that go straight up and they're like lit up. And I I like glowy things thrown in there too. You know, crazy can be good, but it it just depends on the crazy. Some looks I like, some looks I don't. Um, okay, so over to me. Now, this one's going to be a little odd. Um, and I don't really know with the age of the internet now whether this would even be feasible like it was before, but I remember back in the day with Zelda, and this is something that I really, really loved in MMOs, was finding treasure boxes. Remember you would like go, you would be like in a house, you'd be in a town somewhere, you would find this little space in the wall, you'd go into the blackness, and there was like a maze, yeah. and at the end of the maze, you found this treasure chest, and you could loot it. <laughs> and it wasn't stealing, it was stealing if there were people around, and it was out, you know, while you were looking around, if there were people there, then it was stealing. But if you found like the secret passageway with the hidden treasure boxes, Oh my god. That was so much fun. So you'd go into a town. Like I look at, say, Dalaran, right? They have these inns. They have the upstairs. They have drawers. They have chest of drawers everywhere. Like, why can't we, like, get some stuff in those? <laughs> like, so you're wanting... So you're, you're technically wanting, like, Elder Scrolls gameplay then in that sense. Because Elder, Elder Scrolls is... Huh? Uh, it was always stealing, though. Well, it was only stealing if you were, of course, seen. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, I think if they caught you, they, they see you with that. But yeah, no, you could still like go to a chest, you find a chest, and you can un you know, lockpick it and all that stuff. Um, but it's just but finding I, it. It's, you know, it was one of those things. Do you remember? Like, even I think Final Fantasy even had that. You would go into the towns, and they had all these houses. Like, so you'd be in this house and that house. You'd be looking for somebody. There'd just be NPCs in this one house. But you could find, and you didn't know where they were. And I think with the internet now and spoilers, it would have to be some sort of thing where it rotated daily. Like the random spots weren't always there because people can then just ruin it for you on the internet and tell you where all these chests are hidden. You know, back before, you didn't have all of that spoiling mm -hmm. because there was nowhere to get that information before. So is it feasible now? I'm not really sure. It, it would take a lot of thought in order to figure out how to do that and how to make that work. Being people can spoil it and they could, you know, in a week tell you where every single treasure chest is in the game. So I, but that, I, I have to say that was one of my most favorite things was discovering like a hole in the wall and then finding that. And to me, that was like just so exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I would. No, I, I mean personally, I would love to see that. And I mean, to have it spoiled on the internet means 
you'd have to go searching for the information. So if you just didn't search for that information, it would be new to you. Yeah. But even the I mean, caves underwater, like, I'm thinking of, like, World of Warcraft. You know, you spend so much time under the water. Even in Final Fantasy, you're under the water a lot. More hidden caves with crazy stuff to be found. Even if it's, like, a little transmog piece. You know, anything. Um, you know, 100 gold or 100 gil. Like, just... Just anything. You're asking any for too story. much, Missy. You're I... asking for too much. <laughs> Some... <laughs> Something. <laughs> Just any little trinkets, you know, somewhere off in the middle of God knows where. Like, you would really have to explore every nook and cranny from end to end to even, like, be able to find things, these things, you know? Yeah. But I just think, you know, you see more of the scenery that the devs have worked so hard at when you you know, go out there and you explore every nook and cranny of every single area. I just, I love doing that. So I would love yeah. to be able to do that, but there has to be incentive to do that. Or have something funny. Um, like one of them, what, where was that? And I can't remember whether it was in Final Fantasy or if it's in WoW. Where they if basically... it was funny, it was probably Final Fantasy. Well, I don't. It was like Win. It was like Winnie the Pooh. Do you remember that they were sitting oh, by yeah, a campfire? Oh yeah, yeah, that was that. Yeah, that was in BFA. That was up in Storm Song. Yes. Okay, that's it. Yeah, and you just randomly run across them, and it's like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they no, don't I really mean... have anything to do with anything, but it's just even something like that, or have something, you know like that that's just it doesn't even need to be having something tangible in your hands it's just something of you know wow take a look at this check this out you know <laughs> yeah and i think no, that's, I... that's something i really miss from my old days of you know console gaming was that sort of thing in my little you know in the games that i played final fantasy back then and everything else so I really like that, and I miss that. Yeah, we'll see. So, you know, and it's not an excuse, but it kind of... So, like, an MMO is you should definitely... There should definitely be those things in there. And I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, laziness, resources, all the stuff. So, like, when you have a an, an R... Like, a just a regular RPG that's in a fixed world and all that stuff then you will have those explore you know exploration things and whatnot like in final fantasy technically your exploration is your sightseeing log you know and you know and what you get out of that is a, a view is exactly <laughs> it's like well no, I mean, that, that, that's your exploration um Could be a you toy. know on, on this yeah i mean but if you play like final fantasy 15 um then you're gonna get these like you know you're gonna find this cave or like this this castle that the deeper you go i mean you're at the very end of it comes with a really powerful weapon um but like the monsters are getting harder and harder and harder and it's just you know so in those off offline games you definitely will find that and i think what you're looking for yet again, is what Ashes of Creation is actually trying to go for. Um, even the nodes and all that stuff will be randomized, according to Steven. Um, like for mining and flowers and trees and all that stuff. Like so, And there might be a gigantic rock that spawns that like 20 people can just go and like chip away at it. Um, and then once it's gone, then it's gone, and it'll and it will respawn after some time or some random place. Um, so even gathering is going to be random. Oh. oh, so there's not going to be. Well, it kind of is now because they do the nodes do disappear. In yeah, nodes nodes do disappear, but when you have a website that can tell you node here, node here, node here, like then they just respawn in that spot after a while. Yeah. Um, but what he's talking about is it's going to be random. Um, and things are also going to, 
like gathering stuff like that is going to be random to the point of um I said we just need to do like a show on ashes. Um, like I said, this game needs to move its butt a little bit more. We have um, two years. Yeah, I'm. Ho- I think they actually said they're they're looking at Alpha Two, which is what you could buy into right now for at least the two fifty. Um, it's supposed to. That's supposed to start early next year. Um, and then beta one and beta open beta one open beta two. So you're probably, I think they're trying to see about getting this thing out by the end of next year. Because, I mean, the thing is, is, um, you know, hopefully or the beginning of 2022, but the the longer the game doesn't come out, the more money he has to spend. You know, like $30 million, yes, that went to the, it's fully funded till the release of the game. So, I mean, there has to be a date, right? Like, that he has to be like, okay, 30 million takes me to this point. The game needs to try to be ready by this point, right? Um, so I just, I just hope he doesn't get caught in the, and his team doesn't get caught in the cycle of, well, I want to do this, and they're so fixated on this piece that they're not working on the other 10 pieces they should, you know, you know, like hopefully they don't get stuck behind just one aspect and they just keep moving on, right? Hopefully they have a lot of back end stuff they haven't showed yet. Which it sounds like it, right? Um, but yeah, as far as the random and like the the open world dungeons and underworld stuff or underworld, um, well, underworld too, um, underwater, uh, Steven is promising that you will have stuff like that. There will be adventures to have randomly all over the place, hidden and all that stuff, and of course, age too, right? So. WoW has been... (laughs) There's nothing new about WoW anymore. Even when the new expansion comes out, and I I can tell you right now, like, I still feel like I'm playing WoW. (laughs) You know, like, it's still... It's still... It's just, you know, different... um, Like, you know, it's new, so it's something new to play, but it is still World of Warcraft going on 16 years. But that's um, just what like everybody Final... wants, though. And, like, that doesn't seem to detract from the game at all, considering oh, people goodness. wanted to and were crying to revert to classic. So, I mean, it's sticking well, well, to it's what just... it is. Is there's not? I yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's their no, fans. no, and 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 I think that's the thing, right? Is the ideal MMO, and I think the thing is, is people keep going back to World of Warcraft because there's nothing else that gives them that, that, you know, that feeling. Like I said, everyone's wanting that feeling again. Just like, you know, like I was thinking about this yet again today was like, you know, why do I feel the necessity that I need to like have uh, one Druid, like some, some, a lot of people will have one Druid character and they'll just, gear out all four specs you know melee ranged tank and healer and they just concentrate on that one character and they just get all their specs like upgraded and all their time and energies in that and then you have me going like oh okay well i just leveled up to 110 all right now i want to start leveling up again doing the same rotation same rotation so yeah i think what we all need is a is a new fresh MMO no one's ever played before and it lasts us a while. And like I said, I don't think New World's gonna be that MMO, sadly. Uh yeah, it's just not. people during their beta practically beat the game within like twenty four hours. And that's just bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean even yes, my console games crazy. you couldn't do in 24 hours, for God's sake. Right. And you just rented those for five bucks. <laughs> like. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I guess I can go into it. So and my ideal MMO, too, is a good balance of time and effort needed to progress your character. So I'm like, and some of these, you know, some of these MMOs, you know, Massive multiplayer online games uh, for uh, for people who don't know what we're talking about here um, is 
<laughs> is um I'm trying to find there it is <laughs> right um is is just like they pretty much you are working in a salt mine trying to get some stuff you know unless it's older content like you know some of the stuff that's really cool that comes out of a, a raid which is like a big dungeon where you fight bosses and so then they drop loot um and you need like you know 10 to 30 people to yeah to kill these you know these bosses um you know and it takes forever when it's current content uh to get yourself geared and all that other stuff and it's just so i mean it's definitely a carrot on a stick right um and so i think and being a casual player it's like you have to start looking at okay i only have this many hours to play you know today or just this week on average you know say 10 hours a week well if the game tells you well you ain't going to get anywhere in 10 hours for a week like so then you're just wasting your time you know so i guess whatever so my ideal mmo is to find that good balance and i think final fantasy 14 has done that um you I know and, and 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 world of warcraft has gotten better with it um you know the access to get into things and all that stuff especially if you're in a guild that also helps um but like raids though in world of warcraft can still there's no countdown on that so you could you could be in a raid for six to eight hours or longer um and but final fantasy there's a countdown of like two hours or like 90 minutes, I think is what it was, or whatever. So if you don't get it down within 90 minutes, yes, you could leave and come back in for another 90 minutes, but unless you are really progressing, you're not going to go back in for another 90 minutes. Um, you know, and that's what I was like. If I was going to raid, you know, it's probably going to be, unless I'm with a group that they have a, sh a shut-off time, you know, maybe world of warcraft but final fantasy at least had that that already default countdown um and like i said you definitely do get over time you can play 10 hours a week you can cap your tombstones you could buy the best gear you might be able, might not be able to get the best weapon you know like right off the bat that'll probably take you like four weeks um you know so the slow and steady definitely nobody has time for that right um so i think if we can have that and right now hopefully right now i mean according bringing ashes of creation back up into this is uh he's kind of technically saying that leveling is going to take really long and that so i think the time and effort hopefully isn't like the game, the more and more the game looks cool and the way he talks about it and all that stuff, it's becoming more and more not so casual friendly. And not saying that you had to be hardcore to play this game, but you're you're gonna have you're gonna have to dedicate time to this game to get stuff out of it. Um, I mean, even BDO, right? Building that damn ship, trying to just collect all that stuff. It was either well, I maybe spend that's what like BDO stands for now building damn objects. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, but I mean, technically, the ship I was working on, and still technically am, but and <laughs> just not playing it right now, was like a three month. It takes three months to build this ship. Yeah, that was crazy. If you're, yeah, if if you weren't using a crazy amount of silver to to force your way through it, right? Like I'm, I was trying to set myself up to be able to craft what I needed, gather what I needed, but it was a long process, right? But what's cool is all that effort came out with a really nice, sexy ship, and we've seen them, right? I mean, oh, yeah. they were amazing those looking. sea so. battles? Ooh, it's worth it to get those ships and do those sea battles, man. That yeah. was crazy with that Kraken. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And like I said, I think... With Ashes, you know, from, I don't know Steven personally, but from what I've heard from him, he, he's kind of, because he's a gamer too, so he's almost thinking of everything. 
that there's a problem with. There needs to be, I mean, like flying mounts. So you said you don't like flying mounts. Well, there's only going to be like 15 flying mounts on the whole server at one time. And whoever has those flying mounts are either like mayors or governors of these cities. There are like the head guild masters, like castle, you know, like. Yeah. So. Exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, you have to do something pretty damn great to get a, a flying mount. And if you do, and I'm okay they're like, with whoa. That. Yeah, and I'm yeah. okay with that. That's okay. Um, another thing that I would like to see in my ideal MMO, no mods. I think mods, and I know that there are a few for Final Fantasy, but there's mostly nothing. Um wow saturated with them i would like to see no mods whatsoever you play the game as it is if you suck at it then you suck at it <laughs> there's no helping you with mods or do anything you are going to be forced to learn something rotations whatever that's going to be you got to do it on your own. And I, I have to say, in WoW, I do cheat and use the mods because they're there. <laughs> but uh, I've seen you with that, that with that new mod. I saw it go click here, click here, click here, click here. But hey, you know, the thing is, is if you use that to just help you practice and then take it away, it's going to make you a better player overall. But who's going um, to give that up? Because you're not. You're going to rely on that then. I mean, yeah. well, I just I just was told about this and I haven't used it in four years. So, I mean, I wouldn't use it on my main. I wouldn't use it, you know, I don't need to. I know how to play her. Um, but, yeah, it's it's interesting. And it is it is kind of a cool learning tool, but it shouldn't be something that you get to keep forever. You know, it's good as like a training tool. Maybe you could have something that you could use like that at a training dummy and that only at training dummies were you given the option of doing that of what the best spells are and then then that would be gone as soon as you get off of a training dummy that's it <laughs> well see the reason why wow has so many add-ons though is because the game is almost 16 years old and they've never updated the ui on the damn thing yeah and like if you look at me i've only like I use Z Pearl to give my my little character images like so they look alive, right? So they're actually moving in their picture. Um, but I kept the old school thing. I didn't have like the crazy bunched up boxes and all that stuff. And I'm like, that just looks like a mess. I don't even see what people are clicking. Like, you know, you have like three, five things lit up, and they're clicking here, and then clicking over here, and clicking here, and, cl and I'm just like, okay, yeah, no, 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 I'm good with that. Um, I've never needed it. Um, I just think that it, but, you know, it it cheapens the whole experience, basically. So you could go out there from yeah. the beginning and really not work at the game at all, to be honest. <laughs> well, I think if you're, if you, I think add-ons, I think it depends. If you came into World of Warcraft uh, knowing nobody, you're not, you're going to be on the same... Like, I mean, I've seen your UI. You have nothing special with it for the most part, right? And, um, which is, like, fine and all that stuff. Like I said, I know a lot of people that don't even change it. Um, but, like, for me, like, I think it just, that comes down to how old the game is. And also, they've, they, the developers have never redid it. So... You know, and then of course depends on if you're raiding and if you're trying to get other content. So you have to get like, you know, boss guides and yeah. I mean, like I said, it's something... definitely oversaturated. Yeah, like uh, boss guides should just kind of be a part of the game. I think. <laughs> oh yeah. You I know, mean, not a, like it shouldn't need to even be an add-on. It should just be a part of the game, especially when the rating gets really, really hard. But so, I mean, just, there technically is in the journal how you take down a boss, but yeah, like in Final it's Fantasy. It's very so vague. It's, very vague. I've read those oh, yeah. things, and it's it's practically no information whatsoever. Yeah. 
I mean, I will have to say this, that WoW and even Elder Scrolls, definitely, just because the UIs suck, um, I can see why people really go after creating them. And of course, when, when you have, when you're dealing with PC, right, like that's where people like to mod stuff, um, yeah. you know, and enhance the game. Like Bagnon, for me, like having separate bags, I hate that. Like, I know, I do too. <laughs> But I'm just like, no, I I'm only just met Bagnon two years ago for two whole years of, of, of other playing. I didn't even know mm. that existed. And I had yep, separate bags. Yeah. And I just had all my stuff separated. It's like I had my crafting stuff in this bag. I had stuff in this bag. You know, I didn't know any different. And it was fine. Yeah. There no, wasn't I mean, something it's... in order to change it to make my life better. I went with what I had because I didn't know any better. And it yeah. was okay. I mean, like I said, I think some add-ons are are tedious, and I think some of them are, are definitely game-enhancing, especially with World of Warcraft. Like the Z-Pearl for me, Bagnon, um, like the pet battle stuff, handy notes where it tells you where everything's at. You know, like I said, it can... All the things. And then, of course, that all the things. I actually, <laughs> why well, remove that? Because I think it was a hog. It's like 350 <laughs> megabytes by itself. But that that could make um, you, like, I, I don't know, that could drive you to antidepressants or something. <laughs> like, yeah, try, yeah. like, it could make you pretty much insane. <laughs> Definitely. Everything, especially if you're a collector. Let me ask you this, as far as an ideal MMO, would you would you continue to have um, like a looking for group, looking for raid, like a, a, you know, I mean Final Fantasy is massive on that, right? Like, you want to go to this dungeon, you have to queue for it. Um, uh, okay, that's, that's, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. That's a tough question. I well, thought it's, about it's the... that in an MMO, and I'm like, I, I'm really not sure what I would do there. Um, oh, well, well, with your current schedule. Well, like, do you have time to sit around and Stormwind or, or Limsa Limsa going, hey, guys, you want to go do this? You want to go do this? Got, you know, you got to set it up. You have to wait for people to join your group. I think... If you have an MMO like AOC says they're going to do, where you have to pretty much be a part of a guild or a free company or whatever you want to call it, if you have to in order to get through content, then it could be okay. However, that being said, two years into said MMO, I decide to join it. And everybody's way beyond that content. Is everybody going to help for, and go backwards to help new people? Probably not. Because that's Well, you would hope if you have an MMO, you keep that old content relevant. And like I said, Final Fantasy definitely has done that. Relevant, uh, yeah. But, but to run a dungeon, say, I want to run the dungeon. I've just started this game, but you're now two expansions in like everything else or at the end of the first expansion you know and there's like already been 12 dungeons thrown at you so you're in a guild or free company are those people going to go do those dungeons with you are they going to run them or are they going to do as we see now just want to run the very newest dungeon for all the gear and repetitively do that till the next one comes out that's where I have a problem with it because it's great when something's brand new and it's just starting, everybody's going to be on the same page. So sure, you're going to have everybody running these, but a year down the road and you got to look at this MMO that you're creating or your ideal MMO in your mind, you want it to last more than a year or two, right? You want it to go at least probably five years. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run something maybe past five years anymore but like five years I, well uh, i would say at least because i mean right now expansion cycles are like two years right so 
even across I mean, Final Fantasy, the same two years. Wow, is two My years. My worry is um, with all this AI coming and everything else. Do you want to lock yourself in that box right now of one thing and then having, you know, technology advance? It's it's coming faster and faster and faster and faster. And I think that's what the concern is, is people are going to want more and better as it's, you know, as it's progressing. And it's progressing so quickly. <laughs> you know, sure, there's the WoW people don't need that, but they've been playing the same looking MMO forever. I mean, MMOers, if that's a word, we'll, we'll make it a word. It's like, <laughs> it's their, uh, like, it's just their breed. Like, it doesn't matter, like, wow, Final Fantasy. It's that genre is old and in itself. And I know there's a lot of new people coming up because, I mean, not, I mean, these people these days, like, young people are playing, like, friggin', uh, like, Call of Duty like crazy, right? Instant okay. matches, instant gratification. You're moving in, you're moving out. It's quick. Uh, you also got like Minecraft. I mean, that definitely can take time. Uh, survival games off and on. Um, oh, Fortnite. That, that's a big one, right? Crazy Fortnite. And then you have like the old fogies um, that are... You know, that like the slower paced games, you can think, you can explore, you can, you know, you can just take your time, get into the story, listen to the music, all that stuff, right? Um, and I think, you know, to be honest, I think like, <sighs> you know, my thoughts here is... <sighs> You know, MMOs, any type of MMO that comes out, like, I think if if they do not last, and some of those will come out and then they will just die. Like, they have two years and then they either go free to play, right? Um, and a lot of them are turning into, once you buy the game, you have the game. And I think Ashes of Creation is going to play that same. Once you have, once you buy the there's no, I think there's a subs, I think there is a subscription. Yeah, there is a subscription because you do get that. But I think once you buy the game, um, no, no, no. I think if you subscribe, you get, I think you get the game. So it's kind of like what WoW just turned into, right? If you if you subscribe to World of Warcraft, you get everything up to Shadowlands now, um, or that's like how it's supposed to, to be once the pre patch hits, um. But, so I think MMOs, if you don't have at least, and six years, when I say six years, it's like at least three expansions. You know, normally you have your first release, so that's two years. And then normally they always say, well, we're always two expansions thinking ahead, right? So that's at least a total of six. Um And I think the AI and all that stuff, if you build your game correctly, can technically... Like, you can incorporate that in new expansions. Um, you know, I'm not a game developer myself, but I would say that thinking about it like that could just be, oh, on the back, that's like back end, and then you're, you know, you're just incorporating it into the game. So now graphics, Final Fantasy was a beautiful game, and it still is a beautiful game, but you could tell it's... It's aging. You know, if you... If you can look past the the pretty cat girls and like just how good like you know the aesthetics on it stuff look, but you look past that and then you go, you know, if you look at the fine details and you scroll in, you're gonna be like, damn, this game's actually doesn't look that good. <laughs> right. Um, and even with like you know, and World of Warcraft took a huge turnaround. I mean, to be honest, from where it was, um. And they've definitely improved on, you know, you could zoom in. I mean, I mean, look at the the skull, you know, behind me. Like in game, um, like that looks really good, um, you know. But and even when I got pretty close to it, it still looked really good. Like they've they've done a pretty good job. And but to be honest, and we've agreed on this together, is my ideal MMO. 
I don't want it going. I will. The max I would give an MMO would be 10 years. Initial release and four expansions. Well, if they can keep up with the times with it um, and keep up with the graphic changes and everything that's new, yeah, 10 years. But that's key. Well, I think graphics and technology, I think, because, I mean, you've invested, like, the safe, if you invested, which you have, tons and tons and tons of time in Final Fantasy fourteen, and they kept on popping out expansions, you can keep playing that game? Probably. Doesn't matter if it looks older, doesn't matter if it... But I'm old, so I'm fine yeah. with that. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, like, you put so much time into these things, and that's what yeah. that's what sucks for me. I look at all these console games, and I'm like, man, I have some really great console games. Like, I, I've played it before, and I would love to play it again. I'll probably try streaming it. Um, but it's the Ghostbusters game. on, uh, And it's actually Dan Aykroyd's Ghostbusters 3 movie script. So it is the actual, like, story of what Ghostbusters 3 would have been. But it's video game. I have not. So, played, why have I not played this? Because it's on PlayStation and Xbox and I had a PlayStation. All that stuff. But it's on like well, PlayStation like four. Well, it was originally on PS3, and then they remastered it for four. That's where I first I first uh, played it. But yeah, I mean, it's you play as the new Ghostbuster coming on board, and it's literally, and that's what's cool about it is when you're playing it. You're playing the movie they never made, so that's I totally cool, want to right? do that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really awesome, man. Because like you're sitting there with like um, the proton pack, and you're actually like lassoing. What the happens ghost if you cross you the streams? To... <laughs> well, I think they kind of yell at you, but like literally, you're you drag them like you have to actually drag and weaken the ghost and put them over the thing, and they and they go into it. Oh, um, the trap. And like. And like a hundred, I almost hundred percent the game, but there was a part in the game where um, you only saw this particular ghost because it was a like you had to see the ghost and I think take a picture of it, or you had to scan it. You had a little, you know, a little scanner. They're like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, thing. Yeah. And uh, so you had to do that on all the, on these all these different types of ghosts, and I I missed it, and it was only this one part, and it pissed me off. But <laughs> um, you know, so and you have like God of War. I mean, you just have like all these games with such good stories, such good gameplay. You know, and I'm just like, and I'm over here playing a game for freaking twelve plus years, <laughs> and okay. another game for over seven years, and I'm doing the same thing I did like year two. But you're doing I'm it to leveling. interact too, right? Like part of the MMOs. Because oh. if it wasn't for MMOs, you and I would not be friends right now, right? Yeah, Just yeah. And I mean, I mean, definitely playing our console games, right? So it's like, oh yeah. Uh, well, see, that's well, well. These days, I mean, that's like I said, we were talking about this, you know, earlier. Idol, so idol MMO is definitely having community first, content second, or at least having content that enhances the community aspect. Um, and I think Ashes, the way that Steven's talking, is going to have that. World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, they've designed those games to be soloable. You don't, and even if you were to group up with somebody like I did, I, I went from 20 to 30 within three dungeons on my, Dru on my, my uh, Zandalar uh, turtle spike turtle bear dinosaur <laughs> um yeah thing. thing thing and um and like uh we stayed no one said anything to each other other than my macros which is just you know you know hey how's it going thank you for the run and they're like oh hey you you, you did good but no one says anything but they just re -queue again like, okay i guess i did good and then you go again and they're like oh let's re -queue again and then you do it. No one says anything, and everyone just leaves. It's like, and it's just there's no because you have a system that you just hop into for the convenience to get it done and move on. Um, 
and you know so like going back to the you know the if i you know i asked you if you think there should be looking for a group if there should be this and i'm not saying that they don't but i also do know that the convenience today because we're we're a quicker society today right um and we don't got time for that um so it's like unless you're in a guild and you're interacting with that guild and being a part of that even that takes time though too <laughs> um that and we know this we've joined multiple guilds to try to fill in the gaps like i said my timing right now kind of sucks and i was meeting a lot of good people and then of course we started you know we brought back uh cgn here uh so then times kind of went wonky um but you know and of course the whole covid situation um yeah that's a that's a fun one um but yeah the idle mmo yeah uh but yeah i think what's another aspect of an ideal mmo i mean oh yeah so i guess to conclude on the the timing of an ideal MMO, I would say max 10 years, but I would it like to all see depends. I would yeah, I mean, I think... A middle and a conclusion. And then, I don't mind if they carry it on, but do it, like, create something new. Like, do... Like we were talking about with Final Fantasy. Let's end Final Fantasy fourteen. Let's make Final Fantasy 16, 17, 18, whichever whatever number we're, we're going to pick. Well, the, well, the, well, there is a 16 now. It's <laughs> yeah. and Yoshi P produced it. It's going to be on the PS5. But, um, but you you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like start it. Now we have the technology, better graphics. You know, do a complete new storyline. Like let's end well, the people we have. Give them an epic ending. And everybody can just move to this new game that's, you know, at the end. And let's call it a day. It, it, you know what, though, though? Like, I think just thinking about this is... I think the companies themselves, though, are worried about doing that. Because the people love 14, so you would particularly go, okay, 14, let's work on a new MMO. But technically, you have to... You know, but it's, it's almost like there, this, though. right? Like it's still there for people to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you so, wouldn't cancel it; would it would just become like a dormant game. But yeah. the thing is, is until you have that game, be like, hey, no more, no more fourteen. Uh, the team is switching over to said and said Final Fantasy thing. So there's not going to be any more updates other than you know fixes here and there or whatever. Um, so I think it takes a lot of time and you know coordination to start piecing off this team and putting it on the new one and and whatnot and then of course there's that risk of everyone loves 14 for what it is you know like what if they don't like final fantasy 17 18 you know what if it you know so if if they can keep making money which is the whole concept right they keep making money by milking this cow for as long as they can milk it. I mean, <laughs> Blizzard's almost got two decades out of the same damn game. Um, but they would just have to introduce maybe within that game the new characters, the new storyline, like make hints at it, get people, you know, excited about it. I don't know. I just... Yeah. I just think with technology, and I think because it's going to go leaps and bounds quickly <laughs> and soon, <laughs> and once you have AI able to put things together, probably very quickly, <laughs> because they'll just be running 24-7. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's feasible to have any of your MMOs going that long anymore i don't know we'll, well that's see. why well that's why i was saying that mmo the mmo genre is they i mean they said it's a dead genre you know and like just because of course the games that are in it you know final fantasy sucking up one side 
WoW is sucking up another side, and the rest of them, you know, Guild Wars 2, EVE Online, Elder Scrolls Online, uh, Star Trek Online, Star Wars Online, like, they're just kind of taking up the scraps, right? Um, There's billions of people you know, on this planet, though. <laughs> no, no, and uh, we'll see, there is, but those billion people are all playing Fortnite, Call of Duty. <laughs> So, like, mobile games. Branch out! <laughs> <laughs> Branch yeah. out! Learn something new! Well, well, there, well, this is the thing, right? They wouldn't be coming into something new. They'd be coming into a 16-year-old game where the community is established. The elders are around here, and they're going to look at you like, what are you doing here, boy? You know, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come over here, Fortnite people. Leave. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, yeah. My friend's and I mean, ten-year-old son's playing Fortnite, and that's why she always says to me, "What are you gonna be playing Fortnite with him now?" I'm like, "No, maybe." No. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, well, it's on Epic Games. I think. I mean, it's free to play. It's just like it's one of those free things. It's like the Heroes of the Storm. So it is free, and you play it to unlock things slower. You can buy like different looks and sets, so you'll actually like the cosmetic oh, he's stuff. Ten, they, yeah, they've given him a credit card for it, because they can. So. Well, I was telling for you. Yeah. For <laughs> he has more money stuff. for Fortnite than I do. <laughs> right. And he's 10. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty sad. <laughs> but, yeah, I think, it, you know, I, I think the idle MMO is what we currently have out there, but brought together... Um, like and they I think... all have something good. They all have something good. It's just a matter of taking that and combining all the best bits, which I really hope is AOC. <laughs> is yeah, Ashes of Creation. Well, I hope they do that, and then also stick to their guns as far as you know, risk versus reward, you know, time, effort, you know, all those things. Right? I think. Decent I think if we, yeah, well, if you, I mean, have you, let's think you need to, like, I need to start either streaming, like, like reacting to them, like, right when they're happening, or just, like, I don't know, that might be our, our niche, to, our niche to itch that we talked about was, was AOC, um, because, you know, it's going to be a brand new MMO, the heads of the community socially, like we're doing right now, it's going to be a, a clear, uh, you know, open field so um but we have to wait two more years <laughs> no i don't know i mean the thing is is if if one of us or both of us can get into alpha 2 which should start next year yeah. i'm not for sure if they'll have a non-disclosure agreement thing who knows who knows right but uh being regardless new, they, they might being new yeah yeah. Um. So yeah, so we'll see about that. But yeah, I think I think anyways, I th I think we've kind of covered what we like about MMOs and all that stuff, and what our ideal ones would be. I love my World of Warcraft. I love my Final Fantasy. You know, I don't want them to go away, but it's almost like you need to go away. It's time. Like people need to play other games. They need something new. They yeah. need something visually better than what they've had before. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I think so everyone's holding their breath on AOC is because it, it's looking and shaping up to be the next-gen true MMO. So, and they better have really nice clothes. If you look at them, they are very detailed and they are not crazy. And a leather, for example, a leather set will look uniquely designed to the race that is wearing it. So it might be the same. So chest A looks different on a dwarf because it's a dwarf civilization that designed it versus chest A on an elf will look like an elven chest. You'll have to look at it. Like, they are breaking it up like this. Well, that's, that's good, it, though, because that's the way it really would be. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
So, so I, it's the same oh, chest, yeah. but depending on what race is wearing it, it'll look cosmetically different. Yeah, because there's some really, like, really, really, um, how can I put the slutty outfits <laughs> that do not mm -hmm. look good on gnomes? Right. Or lalas, or, you know, and you've got the same dress that's all cut out in pieces and it just doesn't form right. Or, you know, well, stuff that's. Well, yeah. it's because they're a foot tall practically, so well, they're yeah. punchable. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so they, I guess they need, you know, punt proof clothing. <laughs> but yeah, um, I I think that's totally acceptable to do that, and really is more lifelike and realistic to do that. So I'm glad to hear that that they're going to be doing that. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty. Not looking. <laughs> what you looking at? Oh. <laughs> Somebody I to, throw I him a to do space it. suit. <laughs> it's like do I it need again. to. I need to start in here. Yeah, I think and get then, ejected. <laughs> and be like, oh, we're crashing, we're crashing, we're crashing, yeah. and then. Psh, Uh, yeah, I like this, uh, <laughs> this thing, but... Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty funny. Okay, well, well on that note... <laughs> right. I think we'll um, say our goodnights. So, thanks, everyone, for watching us here on Cool Cats Chats at Crucible Gaming Network, and... We'll see you next Friday for Cool Cats Chats um, for episode five. What the question will be, stay tuned. I'll let you know right before we air. So this is Bessie saying good night and good evening. And Brad? Tell her to, to give you the topic earlier. No. So you know it no. beforehand. She'd get excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, thanks for everyone who didn't watch. Uh, uh, we did have five viewers. We were down at two. Uh, your dad gave up on us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's Pat, it's, his bedtime is 8 p.m. Eastern. Like, that's, oh, okay, we've okay. kept him up way past his bedtime. Plus, he doesn't know what the hell we're talking about anyway, so he... You know, well, that's him... why I alluded to the MMO, like explaining massive <laughs> multiplayer online. But even that didn't mean anything. But... Oh yeah, dad will even <laughs> my dad will be just like blah 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 blah. I'm going to bed. Screw yep. this. I got a golf game in the morning. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, thanks for um, watching us tonight. And those that didn't watch to us, hopefully we'll catch you again at some point. Um, like I said, we're gonna be doing this every week. This is Missy's show. She's going to be coming out with some other little cool rants and reality TV shows. And uh, we're going to try to hit up our YouTube channel um, a lot more. And then and then this uh, Twitch is going to be kind of our way of interacting with you guys all. Um, if you're a fellow streamer and you're watching this and you think you're not on part of a team uh, and you want to be part of a team, please go to our website, crucibegamingnetwork.com. Uh, and apply for it um and just uh because we we would love to have some extra people um we're taking five people right now um so yeah if you're a streamer uh big small medium large extra large um biggie saz um then please like i said we would love to have you on our team to work with you to join us on cool cast chats uh stream to the channel uh and yeah uh, and I think, yeah, that was about it. So take us out, Misty. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Friday.